Jailed Zimbabwean journalist Hopewell Chinono is expected to learn whether he'll get bail today. He's scheduled to appear in the Harare High Court today. Chinono was arrested in July for allegedly inciting public violence by tweeting about an anti-corruption demonstration. This is his fourth attempt at being freed after the same court and the lower magistrate's court previously denied him bail. Some observers say Chinono is also showcasing symptoms of COVID-19 and has been advised to self-isolate but was brought before the court yesterday as part of his remand conditions. Meanwhile, opposition politician Jacob Ngativume, who's also in custody on the same charges will also hear the outcome of his bail application joining us now via zoom is chinono's lawyer Doug Coltet. Uh, mr Coltet, a very good morning thank you so much for joining us uh, on this day what are your expectations morning. for court this morning um yeah uh, so uh, hopewell's uh, matter is actually this afternoon uh, at, at 2 15. Uh, jacob and gary Wume's matter we understand is to be heard or handed down uh, this morning at 10. um you know i don't want to to prejudge the outcome of uh, of the case we uh, feel as a legal team or as both legal teams feel that uh, we have a very strong case uh, that uh, that bail is a right in terms of the constitution and uh, and that the state has not uh, demonstrated any compelling grounds uh, for for why a bail should be uh, denied. Uh, of course, bail has been denied uh, three times uh, prior to this, um, and so we we're, we're fully aware uh, of of that uh, possibility. But um, but we we remain hopeful that uh, that indeed uh, he will be freed today. Apparently on Monday you confirmed that Hopewell is sick. Doctors have cautioned him to self-isolate and has been tested for COVID-19, yet we saw him at court yesterday. What's the situation here? Yes, yeah, so, uh, so we received an alert that, uh, that Hopewell was, uh, was not well. Uh, I went to, to see him and uh, he was uh, complaining of, uh, of a headache and uh, having a fever, body aches. Uh, we had also alerted his private doctor who, uh, who um, attended to him, confirmed that indeed he did have uh, a, a fever, an elevated temperature uh, and, uh, and, um, and, and a number of, of other symptoms, which uh, while not confirmation of, of anything uh, by themselves, uh, did raise uh, the flag that, uh, that uh, he, he, he could be a COVID, uh, that he would be a COVID-19 suspect and so the doctor advised that he should self-isolate and should not be brought to court that uh, was uh, disregarded by the prison authorities uh, despite the, the, the doctor's uh, advice to them uh, he was brought to, to court uh, uh, yesterday um, and so uh, yeah that is that is the situation that we are still uh, that we're advised by the doctor that uh, we're still awaiting further diagnostic tests. Um, so that's uh, um, uh, the position so far. Taking all of this into consideration, what precautions are being taken in court? And do you know when the results can be expected? Um, I, I can't speak to when the results will be out. The, the doctor would be better to, to would be in a better position to, to speak uh, to that. Um, very and, and very little precautions are being taken uh, in court. That's that's the truth. Uh, Hopewell sits there in the dock with other uh, with other prisoners who have been brought to court. Um, um, it doesn't seem that uh, that that um, um, uh, measures are being taken to protect. Uh, other prisoners, um, as far as I know, the doctor's advice that uh, he should be put into self-isolation uh, has not been complied uh, with either. Though I haven't been to, I haven't been to the the, the prison today, um, and so yeah, these are these are very serious concerns that uh, that prison authorities don't seem to be taking this this seriously. I hope well has been in an extremely overcrowded uh, cell. Uh, uh, taking more than uh, than double that cell's uh, capacity. Uh, there's uh, there are no face masks for the other prisoners. Uh, uh, Hopewell has been provided with his own, but the other prisoners do not have. There's uh, no soap. Uh, there's uh, running water is also a problem. Um, and so, yeah, the, this is the situation in the prisons. Doug, the government authorities in Zimbabwe have said this is manufactured outrage. There's nothing happening 
in Zimbabwe. Are you able to give us a sense, just on an individual level, are you able to, as you, as, as you uh, go about the work of uh, 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 representing Hopewell, are you able to do your work unhindered? Uh, uh, no, that's the short answer uh, in that I've, I've been, uh, uh, as a human rights lawyer, I have been personally uh, uh, arrested and assaulted uh, on more than one occasion uh, uh, by, by the police simply for, for doing my job. Um, this story of manufactured outrage is, is, is just, is utter nonsense. Uh, uh, if we even put aside the, the Hopewell Chimono case and Jacob and Gary Pume for a moment, uh, two of my other clients who were uh, arrested or were abducted, in fact, on, uh, on, on the 31st July, taken into, into the bush outside Harare and brutally tortured for four hours, they bear the marks uh, of, uh, of, of that torture when I, uh, when I met them, uh, when, once they were eventually handed over to, uh, to the prison, uh, I mean, to, to the police, uh, one of my clients, uh, Terence Guter, had a, a huge gash in the front of his, uh, of his head and was bleeding into his mask. Uh, that's not even to speak of the case in Bulawayo of uh, uh, Tawanda Muchaiwa, uh, who was abducted in, in, in full view of CCTV cameras, brutally tortured for, for hours, uh, suffering uh, uh, life-threatening injuries. Government hasn't had any response to that. Uh, the police have been uh, directly and clearly implicated uh, in in that uh, in that case. The use uh, and the use of, of other state agents in the torture of, of Tawanda. So to say that there's manufactured outrage when there has been utterly no response to the categorically uh, categorical evidence that has been uh, that has been placed in the public domain of these instances of abduction and torture uh, is, is 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 just is is quite frankly uh, uh, disingenuous. You've told us about uh, Hopewell Chinono's physical condition. How is he emotionally? Is he still fighting on? Yes, he is. Uh, he is still uh, still fighting on. He remains uh, resolute, knowing that uh, he is uh, that he's standing on the right side of history, standing up against uh, injustice, and it's that uh, that resoluteness from him that uh, seems to be uh, uh, frustrating uh, the state. We noted in one of the uh, the, the bail rulings from uh, Magistrate in Duna, that, uh, that part of the reason for saying that he's not remorseful was that, uh, that he's often seen at court uh, uh, pumping a, a fist in the air. Uh, and this was used as part of the justification for denying him, uh, him bail. Um, so Hopewell does uh, remain uh, resolute. Of course, the conditions are horrendous. And, uh, and this latest incident with uh, with uh, his health uh, deteriorating and the violation of his rights around that being forced to, to court against his will yesterday uh, certainly have, uh, have got him down a bit. Uh, but um, but uh, he, he, he has the peace of mind that comes from a man who knows that he's done nothing wrong. Can you give us a sense of civic action in terms of uh, uh, any protest that's continuing or is allowed to continue uh, in relation to Hopewell's arrest and all those other activists, including Titi Dangaregba? Yes, so the, the, there is um, um, protest action uh, which, is, uh, which, which is ongoing uh, in, 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 in some creative ways, given the extremely repressive environment. Any form of... Uh, of of street protest is brutally cracked down. People, as we have seen, even if people are in ones and twos, they are, uh, uh, are either, if not arrested, they are abducted and tortured, uh, uh, charged with spurious charges. And so in, the, in this um, highly repressive environment, people have taken uh, to other uh, forms to, to express their discontent. Uh, of course, the Zimbabwean Lives Matter uh, uh, hashtag has uh, has exploded. People have uh, have taken on what are being called uh, solo demos, where people uh, just write a placard, maybe written Zimbabwean Lives Matter, uh, take a, a photo of themselves, often covering their face with their placard due to the fear of reprisals, but then posting those um, uh, those pictures on on social media. So uh, people are innovating even in this highly repressive environment 
to try and keep the space open, to keep exercising those rights guaranteed uh, in uh, in the constitution, uh, despite the government's best efforts to to tear that constitution to pieces. In your opinion, uh, is Hopewell going to be getting freedom anytime soon? I, I can't uh, express an, an opinion on, on that. Um, um, I, all I can say is that, uh, that we are hopeful uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, today, this afternoon, uh, the outcome of, of today's bail hearing will be different to, uh, to, to, to the previous ones. Yeah, because I can imagine those coronavirus concerns are just adding more strains to an already stressful situation. They are absolutely, uh, and uh, and and you know this is this is something which uh, which affects uh, the the uh, the entire prison population, and it's emblematic, uh, or it's it's symbolic in a sense of the very thing that Hopewell was uh, arrested for in the first place. He was arrested for speaking out against the government's uh, 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 corruption and failure to respond to the COVID nineteen. Uh, um, a pandemic in Zimbabwe, the looting of public funds uh, designated for the procurement of, of PPE, uh, and now that now he uh, is at risk of, uh, of of becoming a victim of uh, of the very uh, thing that uh, that he sought to to expose. Doug Coltert, thank you so much for talking to us this morning. That's a pleasure. Thanks very much for having me.